Hello, this is Dr. Bill Cardozo from Creative Electron. We often get asked what are the differences between an image intensifier and a flat panel. So today, Dr. Glenn Thomas, our VP of Marketing, is going to uh, explore what the differences are and how each one of these devices work. Glenn? Uh, X-ray detectors. Uh, good old days we used phosphor-coated screens and you'd stand behind it and you would look at your image. Uh, image intensifiers essentially are old school. They were developed in the 60s for medical applications. Essentially it takes that very low energy image that we're creating with a scintillator and it increases the light intensity or the electron availability by about 36,000 times. Uh, it's the same concept uh, night vision scopes use. They take the available light and they magnify it electronically and then convert it back to visible light. Uh, we're doing the same thing with an image intensifier. Image intensifiers have unbelievable amounts of uh, light intensity based on uh, some conversions. Uh, we can do magnification based on uh, some magnetics that are built into the image intensifier. If you take a 2-4 image intensifier, which is pretty popular in the electronics industry, you have a 4-inch field of view, you have a very bright image at, say, 50 kV, 0.2 ma. If you convert it over to a 2 times magnification, then you're going to reduce your input field to 2 inches. Uh, that cuts your light in half. Uh, the invisible light. So you would have to, to get the same amount of output from it, you would have to kick up your KV and MA. Um, although you can do magnification, and the magnification is actually pretty decent, image intensifiers tend to be very dependent on the amount of energy applied to them and the amount of light. Since they are a vacuum tube, similar to a CRT, they are very susceptible to burn in. If you take a component and you leave it in the image for a couple hours, somebody walks away from the x-ray system, you can actually burn that detector to the point where it's unusable. Best case scenario, image intensifier is going to be 256 shades of gray, uh, which is not a big deal if you're doing visual inspection. But when you start doing inspection with a computer program or computer processing, you really want more than 256 shades of gray. And that's where the digital flat panel detectors have come in place. Uh, in that detector, essentially, is another scintillator screen. Uh, under that scintillator screen are photodiodes. Essentially, those photodiodes are taking the light, converting it to a digital electronic signal, sending that signal over to a computer. Image intensifiers use CCD cameras or um, even digital cameras to pick up that image. So they're picking up a 256 grayscale image. Uh, you may have a digital camera on the back that gives you a 1024 by 1024 output, but you're still only getting uh, 256 shades of gray. Digital flat panel detectors can give you up to 65,000 shades of gray, depending on the, um, the bits of the camera. Uh, typically, in a fairly reasonably priced flat panel detector, you're going to get 4,096 shades of gray. Uh, and fairly reasonably, I put that number is in competitive in pricing to an image intensified based system. Uh, you can get flat panel detectors that cost two times more than a standard x-ray system would be. Uh, you can get 65 million shades of gray. Uh, you can get resolutions that are down sub-micron. But for most industrial electronics applications, none of that's necessary. Um, there's no reason to spend uh, sixty to $100,000 for an image detector when you're looking at gross defects. Even micro-avoiding in electronic components doesn't require that type of resolution or speed. Typically, uh, the advantage of an image intensifier is the speed. Uh, typical, it's real time, 30 frames per uh, second. Uh, that's one of the keys, and that's one of the things that the image, the flat panel image detectors come about recently is its ability to do uh, much faster frame rates. Um, typical uh, bottom line frame rate, um, you're looking at a you know, one second, one frame per second. Uh, for a real usable image detector, for a flat panel detector, you're looking at 30 frames per second. Um, there's really not a reason an X-ray 
of electronic components to go more than 30 frames per second. Uh, you can get detectors that'll go 120 frames per second, uh, 500 frames per second if you have enough money. But in our application, 30 frames per second is really all you need. Uh, that's considered real time. And that's essentially what your TV runs at is 30 frames per second. Thanks, Kalan. If you'd like more information about this topic or anything else related to x-rays, please contact us at 760-752-1192 or uh, check us up online at creativeelectron.com. Thanks. <music>